This is Profit from the Inside with Joel Block. Insights to give your business the inside track. And now, here's your host, Joel Block. You may have noticed in the last several months or even longer that there is a whole new class of politicians, celebrities, and others that seem to have enormous media power outside the normal circumstances that we always see them take advantage of. And they're going outside the channels. And there's a certain reason they can do it. And there's a way you can do it with your business too. And discuss that with us, marketing expert, Ford Sakes. Ford, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. How are you doing today, Joel? So listen, so let's talk about some of these guys. I mean, I'm reading over the weekend uh, that these politicians, the traditional politicians can't control the new class. We see these guys on Instagram. They have 100 million followers or whatever they have. They are going direct to their customers. They're bypassing the networks. They're bypassing all the channels. How are they doing it? And Lynn, let's come back and tie. How can businesses do the same thing? Well, you know, it comes down to really their digital footprint. And what's important for the listeners today is to think about how you do business. And regardless of what type of business you are, whether it's small or big or medium or Fortune 100, your digital footprint really comprises four different parts. First part is your website. Second part is social media. Third part is business directories. And the fourth part is review websites. Now, that's a lot to cover in a very short period of time. But the the bottom line is, before someone's going to do business with you, they're going to Google you. They're going to Google you, your executives, your company. They're going to look at your ratings. They're going to look at your footprint. And your footprint, just like we were talking about with the celebrities and the politicians, influences decision-making processes. So it's really important for organizations around the globe to understand that they need to take control of their digital footprint or somebody else will. Okay. So you talked about four different things. We probably all think more about two of them than four of them. So let's spend a little time on number three and four. I mean, let, let's examine one and two for a second because those are the basics that we all understand. Sure. What are the basics of a website that uh, everybody's got to have in place to make sure that they don't get basically laughed at by the, by the community? Well, one of the first things I would recommend is, you know, we can all do this as an exercise. Grab your mobile phone and look at your website. And if you can't read the text, then obviously it's messed up. Can you find the things that are most relevant for the user experience? So, for example, it depends on what type of business you are. Sometimes you're not trying to get someone to call you. So, fine. You don't need your phone number up there. If you're a manufacturer and you're going through a distribution network, you're not necessarily going to have your phone number. The point is, though, look at your website on a mobile device. Put yourself in the mind of the prospect. Ask yourself, is this the information that I want my prospects to get at the stage they are in the buying process? Then once they've done it on a mobile device, they need to do it on a digital pad, an iPad, and also on their computer. So they need to mystery shop their website and just use common sense. So often they've paid companies thousands of dollars to build their website, but they expected the website developers to understand how to market, and they don't. They just don't know. All right, so, so those, those, are, those are separate things. One yeah. of the other things that I'm sitting thinking, you're going to mystery shop your own deal, but you might have a spouse or a family member do it too and watch them and see whether they have an easy time finding this stuff. Do people do that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can, there's also firms you can hire to do that. Um, As a strategic consultant, that's what I do. I mean, when companies first hire me as a consultant, the first thing I do is mystery shop and give them a list, a report of all the things that I found that they need to improve so they know how to bridge the gaps between where they are and where they're going. But that's something everybody can do. So you can do it yourself. You can have a colleague do it. You know, you can have your staff do it, but you just need to make sure that the information on your website is solid and it delivers the proper user experience. And which it's amazing, Joel, how many companies even today still have very poor user experiences online. Well, especially as we've migrated to mobile, many of these websites are still not mobile friendly. They're all set up for desktops, right? I mean, yeah, that- if you have to pinch and zoom, it's not mobile. Google changed their algorithm in August of 2014 that, that favored mobile over desktop. And page speed and everything. So the, without getting technical, the bottom line is mobile first environments are what you have to look at and then work backwards. Okay. So websites are the first one. The second one you said was social media. Let's let's somewhat uh, quickly go over this one too. All right. Big I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover everything they need to know about Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Business, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. It doesn't even matter what the program is or the platform is. 
The bottom line, all social media websites are just databases. What's YouTube? It's a database of videos. What's LinkedIn? It's a database of profiles. What's Instagram? It's a database of photos and, and stories. So they're just databases. The first concept is they're just databases. Don't get seduced by technology. The purpose of those platforms is communication. And you want to ask yourself for your brand, your company, your organization, how are you using these communication tools to engage your prospects and visitors and fans and get them to consume information, get them to comment on that information and get them to share? Because that's the three things you want from social media. You want them to consume the content. You want them to engage by sharing or liking it. And then you want them to comment. And, and that's how you measure your success on social media. So the two key concepts before we go on to the third one, one, social media websites are just databases. Two, fish where the fish are. So for me, as a keynote speaker to franchising, I speak to franchise organizations. So I spend most of my time on LinkedIn and on YouTube. But if you've got a business that's, let's say, weight loss or Pilates or something like that, you're going to go more business to consumer, which means Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram are probably going to be where you want to fish. So fish where your fish are. Where does your market congregate? And then how can you get in front of them with a message? Okay. So if people aren't uh, engaging, which means sharing, liking, and doing those things, and they're not commenting, that means that there's something wrong with your posts. That's exactly right. It means your content isn't relevant or you haven't attracted the right people. Sometimes, like the clients we work with, sometimes they have really good content, but they're not titling it properly. They're not using the keywords and hashtags properly to get it found. So it's, it's two part. You want to have great content, but you also have to use the platform effectively so that people can find that content. So you might say, some people will say, well, I get all my business off of referrals. Well, that's because all your other marketing sucks. I'm sorry. I mean, nothing wrong with referrals. <laughs> referrals are great. You want, you want referrals, but no, don't be, beat your chest about how proud you are that that's the only way you get business. That's because that's great. You do a great, great job. People, you get referrals. You want word of mouth referrals, but you also want the traffic from non-referrals. Yeah. So how do people know if their content is good or if their market's wrong or if their titling's wrong? I mean, is, is there a way to know or are you have to engage somebody on the outside? Well, you want to you wanna know what your cost to acquire a customer is. You want to know what your profit is on the first sale, what's your conversion rate, and what's your long-term value. You need to ask yourself the basic metrics of key performance indicators, KPIs. What are you going to measure? So for me, I don't have millions and millions of followers on Twitter, but that's not where I spend my time. Okay. I've got plenty of views on YouTube that get me booked, but I've got channels that have millions and millions of views as opposed to a few thousand, hundred thousand, excuse me. So it's not about the number. It's about the quality. So some people get seduced and they really want, oh, I want more people. I want more people. Well, you don't want more. You want better. So how you measure it is, is the phone ringing? Are you getting the deals? Are you shortening your sales cycle? Are you getting the sales you expect? Are you getting the leads that you expect? If not, then you have to take a clear look at what are your marketing messages you're sending out? Are you using that channel effectively? And if not, you need to refocus. So it's, it's not the medium, Joel. I mean, a lot of people will say direct mail doesn't work. Trade shows don't work. Advertising doesn't work. No, they all work. All the mediums work. You just have to make sure that you have the right combination between the message and the market before you worry about the medium. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, you know, as somebody who's very oriented to sales, I would certainly say it's never the medium. I mean, the media may not be the right fit. Right, right. But as long as it's a good fit, you got the right message, it ends up being all about selling and you just got to figure it out. So absolutely. Maximizing it. Social media would be, social media sites are just databases. You want to fish where the fish are and you need to do some measurement to see, is your content getting read, shared and engaged? If not, take a look at your content and take a look at how you're titling it. You know, uh, it seems to me like engagement, like sharing and liking happens a lot on Facebook, but it doesn't happen nearly as much on LinkedIn. You know, yeah, LinkedIn is more of a consumption method, but people will like and share it. It's just a different medium. It's, there's a different intent behind it. But you do on LinkedIn, you do get followers, you get people who like it. And if I see a good article, I'll follow the article or follow the company because I want more you know, information related to that. Just like your show, you've got listeners out there that, you know, and for those of you listening, if you know people that ought to be on Joel's show, you know, not as a guest, I'm talking about listening then you need to share this content because that's the world we live in. If you deliver great content like we're doing here, people should tell other people that they care about 
so that you can help them get the answers that we're giving you to. Thanks for pointing that out. I, you know, I'm just sitting there listening. I mean, you've asked a lot of questions that people need to be asking themselves. I mean, those are really, really good questions. How are people interacting with your content? Are they liking, sharing, are they doing? I mean, there's probably been 50 different questions so far that you've put out there. And, you know, if people just follow the instruction of the guests that come on shows, people like you, Ford, they would be so much better off, which would be fantastic. Well, you and I both, yeah, we both serve C-level executives. So we want to make sure that we're giving information that's tactical to that C-level. Maybe they're not the person who's doing it, but they can then delegate to that person on their team to then go do those action steps. Exactly. So there's a lot of thought-provoking kind of material, a lot of interesting ideas. So we talked about website. We talked about social media. What's the third one on your list? Well, we can go through review websites. Now, it depends on your business, but People check review websites. I mean, have you ever been to a four-star movie, Joel, that was terrible? Probably. Have you ever been to a one-star movie that was great? Sure. (laughs) But unfortunately, the world we live in, reviews count. So, you know, Google review, Google business is, is one of the best places that I recommend that people build up their Google reviews. So one, you want to go to Google business. You want to make sure you've claimed your business listing. You want to make sure you enhance your business listing. Enhance it means adding photos and videos and text and hours of operation and specials and and details so that you can have a bigger footprint. You want to get reviews. And this is a big one. This always comes up. People always say, well, Ford, okay, that sounds great. But how do I get the reviews? And here's how you get them. You look for the happiness moment. So Joel, the next client you work with, the next speech you give, When people come up to you and they tell you how great it was or how you've helped them in whatever area of their business, once they express the happiness moment, that's the the hot button that should say, hey, would you mind leaving me a Google business review? Or emailing them and saying, hey, thanks for the great feedback. Here's a quick link to a Google review. So I have bit.ly links that I send out. If someone says, hey, you did a great job, so I send on, them out. Hold on, you know, hold on. Explain what that is, because I, uh, I, use, I use Bitly links all the time. They're fantastic. Tell people what to do with those. All right. So number one, go to Google and search for your Google business listing. When it comes up, there's a link in the browser. If you share that link on social media or to your clients or to a specific client via email, they can click that link and go straight to the page where they can review you. But instead of saying this super, super long link with a bunch of funky characters, I take that link, I go to bit.ly, which is a URL shortener, B-I-T dot L-Y. It's a free account. You can also get a paid one. But you can take a long link, put it in bit.ly, and it'll make a short link that you can send out. Now, what's great about Bitly, though, unlike tiny URL, which does the same thing, right. you can have an account that lets you say, uh, Tracks it. Joel's business, graphic arts company, automotive company. What, you know, so you have Bitly slash and then your little thing at the end. It just helps when, when people don't have a crazy thing to remember. It's just better. And then you get a report that says how many clicks there's been on those links. It's awesome. I, I think Bitly is a great tool. And anyway, sorry to interrupt you. No, you're not interrupting at all. In fact, if my review link is bit.ly forward slash. So bit.ly forward slash review Ford Sakes, S-A-E-K-S. Well, if I give that out in an audience or put that on a PowerPoint slide or I send them an email or mention on a podcast like I'm doing today, then people, all they have to do is click that link and then go straight there to do a five-star review, which of course, that's the only one I want. So, and I'm just kidding. I love all feedback, but that's the key. So back to the point on reviews, Google business is the first one, but you want to look at what other review websites does your industry use? So for example, I spoke recently in St. Kitts to the tree care industry association and, (laughs) you know, and you know, you get all these types of associations. And then I spoke for Riverhead building supply out of Connecticut and New York. And both of them, I told them they need to look at review websites for house.com, Angie's list, um, home advisor, you know, you need to look at the sites in your industry. Now that was in the construction industry, of course, but if you're in a certain industry that has review sites, specific review sites, then you need to make sure that you're monitoring those too. Yeah. No, listen, those are great. And, and I was only laughing before because it's amazing how many different kind of associations there are things that you could never dream of, but it's, it's not that that association is funny. It's the idea that there are just yeah, so 14,000 associations that I have on the list 
Yeah, there's there's more than enough for work for everybody. Yep. So you identify the uh, the ones you set up these links in advance. Maybe you set up a bitly, you know, so you'd say a review Joel yeah. block one, two, three, you get whatever you want. And you send the people to, to the link and, and everybody should be getting in the habit of doing that sort of thing. And I know that for authors, people go to Amazon, they want to see these verified reviews. I mean, I know what you're saying is right. The, see, the difference uh, for between what you're talking about and like a movie review is the movie reviews are done by professional critics. And I, I rarely agree with the professional critics. I mean, I'm not a professional consumer. Yeah, but there's like Rotten Tomatoes that has where it's the consumer rating them too, though. That, that, that's right. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But what shows up in the newspaper are these right. critics. And newspaper. Wait, 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 wait. Back up. What, what was that? What was that? What, news? What? News? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are people who probably never heard of that uh, that, are, that are probably listening to this show, you know. But the, the people who show up in the media, uh, whichever form of media it is, a lot of them are professional people, and and I don't know. I, I I personally don't line up with a lot of what they have to say, and I don't either. But the key the key for our listeners today is really to look at your business. What are people saying about you? Because you you know I I do a lot of work with branding, and when I work with top organizations on their brand, I tell them you don't control your brand. You can influence it. You can try to influence it, but your brand is whatever the marketplace thinks it is. So how are you influencing that brand? What are you doing to connect with your, your fans, your customers, your clients, and your prospects and your suspects? And it's, it's how you communicate that brand. And that back to the beginning of the premise of this whole show, which is your digital footprint, that digital footprint really influences it. So your website, you've got social media, and you've got review sites, which of course, everybody needs to go to Google first. Your Google business review is the top one, but then you can look, work backwards from there. Maybe you Yelp or TripAdvisor or some other Urban Spoon or whatever different system that you're using to measure your customer success. What's great about this is, you know, I always talk about the inside track, which is the best, smartest, fastest way to get things done. And if you do the digital footprint formula that you're talking about, that really is the inside track to some really good marketing. I mean, I, I hear it for sure. All right, so let's go on. So we have these review sites. Are there a lot of review sites? Every industry has their own? or Every, or every industry has, has their own. There's basic general ones that apply to everybody, but then certain industries have more specific review websites. Attorneys have review websites, doctors, dentists, consultants, speakers. I mean, there's all different types of review sites. There's no shortage of them. You have to use a little common sense. Some of them are a waste of time. All right, so let me ask you kind of a contrary question. A lot of times uh, people must pay other people to put good reviews because, you know, sometimes there's there's a lot of that. And then there's there, there's always that one guy that will drop a bomb and, and, and splash stuff all over you. Uh, how do you deal with either side when, when you have competitors that are paying people to write stuff or you have somebody that sabotages your your listing? There, yeah. So that's a really good point. The key is you want to try to respond to all the people who leave reviews I had a negative review on Prime Concepts on Google My Business, and it basically said, I don't know this company. I've never done business with them. One star. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can report it to Google. You can try to reply. But there are trolls. There are people in other countries, um, not saying any specific country, but there are that set up a Google account, leave a bunch of fake reviews to increase the influence. See, if you leave a lot of reviews, your authority as a reviewer increases. So there are people that go out and do, let's say, 100 crappy reviews just to increase their authority, even though they don't even, they've never even done business with those. So I've got people in, you know, in Russia who left a review, but they've never done business with us. They don't even know who we are. I and mean, they actually, the review actually said, I don't know this company. I've never been there. I've never done business with them one star. And I'm like, well, okay. Went to Google. They said, I'm sorry. That's just the system we live in. So what you can do the answer is you need to have enough activity that it drowns out those bad reviews. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, that's the main way. You can respond, but don't lose sleep over it. It's the world we live in, just like YouTube reviews. Don't read your YouTube comments. Just ignore them and move on. You know, I guess it's a game and you just got to learn how to play the game, huh? Yeah, it's just it's part of the world we live in right now. So don't overthink it. Don't lose sleep over it. Obviously, you know, do your best to combat it, but deliver great value, encourage your customers to leave comments. Uh, and then that brings us to the fourth one, which is directory listings, which is different than a review website. So what is it? 
Okay, so directory listing. So you and I are both members of the National Speakers Association. I don't know, Joel, how long have you been in, in NSA now? I've been in NSA for five years, but I've been okay. speaking for a lot longer than that. All right, so I've been in NSA for 25 years. And in 25 years, with the thousands of people that I've met and worked with in the National Speakers Association, I don't think more than one has ever been hired because they were a member and got their directory listing in eSpeakers on the web. However, if you don't set up your eSpeakers account, or in this case, we're talking speakers, but if you're a business, it could be an attorney, whatever. If you're a member of an association, so let's, let's go back to the, the focus point. If you're a member of any association, an EO member, a YPO member, a Vistage member, you know, a member of the American Marketing Association, whatever, whatever it is, go to a chamber, go to that website, log in and make sure your membership profile is updated effectively. Now, here's the reason why. It's not so much because you're going to get tons of business from the business directory. But what the business directory listing does is it validates your website and your name and address and your business review, and it makes you go higher in the search engines. So when Google sees that your directory listing is on several different directories and it's consistent, they bump up your Google listing because now they know that company is more creditable. So what a lot of people do is they ignore directory sites, but they really need to go check their directory sites to make sure that their name, address, and phone called NAP is complete and consistent on all the sites that will give them a boost with their website listing in, in Google. So that's a form of SEO or search engine yeah, optimization. Yeah, I don't want to get over technical, but in a sense, yes, it's, it's a business tactic to help you get higher rankings. It also will help you get found on your other content because your, your business becomes more credible. Well, it also, you know, goes back to the first point that you made in the very beginning, which is that people are going to do research on you and they're probably looking for corroborating information. So beside the Google is going to find you and, and enhance the right. listing. Uh, you know, if somebody's just looking around, uh, it's going to show up in the uh, search engine. Right. It's going to push all the bad crap down because if you show it, your website shows up, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram shows up, then your business directory listings show up, your guest blog posts show up your industry articles show up, your association listings show up, you push, push your competition down off the page. So it's, it goes back to the whole point of how findable are you and how visible are you? So it's just like you, you're doing the show on the inside track. Oh, you do a weekly show, isn't it weekly? Weekly. So, so weekly listeners can come on your show, participate and, and listen to your show and they can share your show and they're going to get the inside track to business, to raising capital, finding and tracking top talent, leadership issues, finance issues, marketing issues, sales issues, you know, anything having to do with growing a business. Right. And, and so your footprint just continues to grow. And like me having my podcast or you having your podcast, we increase our influencers. So for example, when this show airs, I will be promoting it. Hey, I was a guest on you know, the inside track with Joel and you're going to promote it. So now you're getting the influence of your digital footprint combined with mine. Yeah. And that's, and that leverage is really powerful. You know, it's a funny thing. People always push back and they say, you know, these podcast shows, they don't really work because they don't really get a lot of uh, listeners. I said, when's the last time you were in the wall street journal? Yeah, I've been in the wall street journal. Did your phone ring off the hook? They got millions and millions of readers. Uh, no, it didn't really ring off the hook. Well, exactly. That's not the point of uh, being in the media. There's a different purpose and there's a leverage purpose and people really don't understand the purpose of PR and the way that these assets and these media, you know, components get put together. Yeah, and I would tell your listeners out there from a marketing tactic, regardless, you know, we happen to be experts that deliver content through the spoken world, both Joel and I, but you know, maybe you're a business executive or a CEO or a CEO or a CIEIO, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is you should be, or someone in your company should also be guest experts on podcasts related to your industry. There's podcasts on every topic and you should have your company positioned. And the key to it isn't just when the podcast runs or when the media runs, whether you're in traditional media like the t TV news or, or whatever, or whether, you, like you said, the Wall Street Journal, it's in the replay of it. It's in the, it's in the reaching the digital. So when someone sees, like, I'll put this in my media department on my website, you'll put it out. It'll go on Facebook. It'll go on LinkedIn. And it'll, go, it'll get promoted. And so you don't know where someone's going to come into contact with you. So if someone is listening to this podcast today and says, oh, 
that guy sounds like he's got some good information. Then it'll make my phone ring. Like you don't have to be over promotional uh, as a podcast guest. You just have to deliver really great content and then let the marketplace decide because people are smart. They can Google my name and they can find out how to get a hold of me pretty quick. Exactly. You don't, you don't need to put that out there too much. And plus it always ends up in the show notes anyway. So it, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be there, but this is, you know, listen, let's talk about podcasts for a few more minutes. Cause I, cause this is a topic. It's kind of an esoteric topic that people don't really understand. And what you just said is really one of the most important things is that every executive from every company or some group of executives should be out there doing these kinds of programs. Even if they don't have great reach, if you produce a great conversation, then you have something to promote. It just, it goes a long way and you never know what the leverage point's going to be and who's going to see it because it spreads across social media with hash marks and tags and different things. And it just works. It's easy to produce. It doesn't take a lot of time. And as long as you've got great value, you should be easy. Like even before this, you know, you, you emailed me and you said, Ford, you know, I don't have a list of prepared questions. We're going to go and we're going to hit the key topics. Well, yeah. So for those listeners out there, Joel can have someone like me on the show because I'm not drinking from an empty well. I've got plenty of content. We can talk about any topic you want related to marketing the business or growth, and I can talk on it for an hour. So as a guest, it's not about me. What you need to do is ask yourself, what areas of expertise are you competent in and what problems does your market have that you can help solve? And as long as you identify what the key areas are, of problems are that you can help solve, then you all you have to do is find a podcast or t- thousands listening. Then you can send an email saying, Hey, I, I'd like to be a featured guest in your podcast. Um, I've got three tips on X, Y, and Z, and they'll set, set it up for you. It's so easy to do. Most people just won't take the work. Now I'm going to cover one more point though. One of the great things about doing a podcast is if you're like, for me, I, I have a podcast on franchising that we're just launching and I'm interviewing key CEOs of franchise companies for two reasons. One, they're going to be on my podcast, but I'm not worried if I have a million listeners. I'm doing it because I want to find the inside track of how that CEO grew that franchise up. Now, think about it from my perspective. He gets to tell his story. He gets to help other people learn how he did it. And I get the inside track, like you're saying, it's your inside track, on how these companies grew, which just gives me more and more expertise to go out and speak, train, consult, write, you know, whatever I'm doing, or use social media, and also for prospecting. So, you know, at the end of the day, everything, whether it's a podcast, a YouTube video, a blog post, an article, a tweet, it's communication. So when you get ready to wrap up the end of this episode, I just want you to understand that how are you communicating? What are you doing to communicate to your market through your digital footprint and a podcast whether you're a featured guest or whether you host your own or whether you do both, start as a guest first, get comfortable being able to deliver information, then decide, okay, we really should have our own show based on whatever the topic is. But you know, a podcast, being a guest is a pretty easy way to get started because you just, yeah. you just show up and you produce 20, 30, 40 minutes of material. And then you have a link you can put on your website. Uh, you know, you can promote it in a variety of different ways and all your social media and, and you know what? It really starts to have a ripple effect and it really, it's, it's really powerful. So it just worked. This is a cool medium. This, this interview went in a cool direction. And one of the things that's happened about almost all of the interviews that I've done is that they all end up going in a cool direction and everybody reveals the inside track for what they do in a cool way. And they're really, I mean, I'm all about the inside track. I just, I think that the best, smartest, fastest people, they just always end up on the inside track. There's some people that know how to run restaurants better than other people. There's some people that know how to play baseball better than other people. There's some people that market better than other people. And they're doing things that others aren't doing. And, and there are specific things that they know what they are. And making money on that, that's why it's called profit from the inside. Profit from the inside track. So there you go. Well, Ford, listen, man, thank you very much for being on the show, for sharing Absolutely. what you've done. It's been great. Thank you. This was a great interview. Your contact information will be in the show notes. And, and listen, you're easy to find anyway because you, you've got a substantial digital footprint. So uh, you're the man to talk about it. Thanks so much, Joel. All right, buddy. Thank you. You've been listening to Profit from the Inside with Joel Block. For more insights and to learn more, visit joelblock.com.
How about a shout out and a giant thanks to my podcast producer, David Wolf, and his team at Podcast and Radio Networks. Profit from the inside simply wouldn't be what it is without David and his team. For more information or to learn how you can launch and produce your own podcast, reach out to podcastandradio.com.